Good morning, guys. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. That's great. So let's start. Uh, good morning and good afternoon again, dear colleagues, depending on your time zone, of course. Thank you for joining us today for the BA Excellence Online Conference, powered by Business Analysis Community and Product Management Community. Just a couple of things to mention before we start with our speakers. First, we have separate webinars related to the BA conference. Due to time limits, some will be held in parallel or on separate days, and you can find the links to the conference description. You are welcome to join, but please keep in mind that spaces are limited. But uh, no need to worry. If all spots are filled, additional webinars are already planned. The second thing is that we have a virtual room where you can join after the end of the talk. This will give you the chance to speak directly with the speakers and discuss a topic or just to socialize. You will find the link in the talk description too. Last but not least, please pose your questions in the QA section on the Wii community platform or in the chat on the YouTube channel. These questions will be addressed to the speakers at the end of the presentation. And that pretty much concludes all the general information. And now I'm super excited to introduce you to our first speakers, Julia Timoshenko from IPAM Poland and Naris Sutravey from IPAM India. Both of them are senior business analysis managers with many years of experience in business analysis. There are also highly experienced speakers, contributors, mentors, interviewers, and many more. In general, they always go for the extra mile. The topic they will present to us today in a very interesting way is the product excellence mindset and they will cover subjects such as the, the vision and mission of the Product Excellence Initiative. So hello, Julian Nares. How are you today? Hello, hello. I'm good, Maria. Thank you. Yes. I'm excited too. I'm excited too. I, 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 I believe I'm, I already know that I will enjoy your topic so much. So Nares, I was checking your location, but it was such a long address. I couldn't understand. In which city in India are you located exactly? I'm in Hyderabad in India. Where is that? Like place it to the map. Okay. Um, so in India, if you see the India map, it comes to the lower half of it and uh, north of lower half. Yes. In, exactly so it's the, the cold middle. part or the more uh, hot part? Where is the? Do you recommend uh, it for traveling for holidays? There is that uh, something? Different? Yeah, definitely. This is a good season, so I think uh, anything between October, November till February is very good. And uh, okay. if you want to enjoy rains in Hyderabad, you should come in the months of July, August. Yeah, those are good months for rains, okay, but other know. months is hot, so I don't suggest that. Okay, and Julia, where are you located exactly in Poland? That is Krakow city, and that oh, is on the beautiful. south of Poland. Ah, it's very beautiful. I, I had the luck to go, so please audience, if you haven't been, you have to check Krakow, it's very nice. So guys, the floor is yours, you can introduce yourselves, you can start with the presentation, we are, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. So uh, I want to quickly introduce uh, my uh, dear colleague, uh, Yulia, over here. Hi, Yulia. So uh, Yulia is with us today. She, as Maria said, is a senior business analysis manager for EPAM systems in Poland. And uh, Yulia works with us in our global business analysis uh, and product management practice. Uh, well, thank you for joining me today, Yulia. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have also Naresh Sutrave, Senior Business Analyst Manager from India. Naresh is working on Product Excellence Initiative in IPAM India, which is centered around product-centric approach. Great. So, Yulia, I want to talk about uh, this concept of product-centric approach that you are working on in your region. So, it sounds very interesting by the name. So, let us uh, know more about it. Um, what is this uh, product-centric approach all about? Can you please uh, help us with that? Sure, sure. So, overall, there are three main approaches, product-centric, project-centric, and customer-centric. Product-centric is focused on continuously delivering value to end customers and results to business through products. 
Project centric is focused on providing one time output according to requirements from stakeholders and customer centric is focused on the needs and uh, experience of customers in all business decisions, aiming to build strong long term relationship and enhance customer satisfaction. Today, basically, we will focus on product centric approach. And okay. product centric delivery model is in demand nowadays. As you could see from the slide, according to Gartner survey, 54% of the companies will have fully adopted product centric delivery model in less than five years. And 15% from them already have it adopted. In addition, 32% have a product centric delivery model in some use but not fully adopted. And only 15% do not have plans to move to product centric delivery model, which basically brings us to the 85 of companies that have adopted or plan to adopt product centric delivery model. But why are they doing that? Project trends okay. to happen in business unit silos uh, compete with other companies' projects for resources and only contribute in isolated metrics. Product-centric business models offer quicker business outcomes, improved customer experience, reduced friction within the organization, and more flexibility. All of that result in increased trust across the business as an organization works toward the same goal. Plus, a product-centric setup allows better engagement between IT and business units. The changeover requires work from some technical like DevOps and system improvements and some culture like collocating IT members into business units to start the conversation. Moreover, according to the study, McKinsey, sorry, product-centric companies see a from six to nine percentages higher revenue growth compared to their peers. That's very, very why. interesting, Yulia. Uh, so I think six to nine percentage is that is really great. Uh, so uh, also very interesting thing you told me about a long term relationship with our customer. So uh, I also want to hear from you a couple of uh, benefits and other challenges that you may be seeing in implementing product centric approach. Sure. Thank you for that question. So as usual, we have pros and cons and the product centric approach has those as well. So from pros perspective, that is focused approach. Focus solely on the one scene that you do the best, which is to build your product. Product led growth advocates the strategy of putting all your efforts in building the best in class product in your niche. This is a big time and effort saver. The second thing that is building reputation. You build your reputation in the market through the quality of your product. You would, uh, would be known in your industry for providing the best product if you make it on the best of its level. This reputation is more long lasting than any other form. And the third one that is customer loyalty. A proven form of building customer loyalty is through addiction in your product. Customers who get addicted to your product would never consider leaving your brand, provided your product consists of high quality engagement strategy that provides continuous value to your customers. But also there are cons. Bad product market fit could happen when you solely concentrate it on product and launch it you might miss out on finding the right product market fit. This means you might fail in meeting the demands of your customer. Your product might be the best in its niche, but it would be on no use if customer does not want it at all on the first place. The second risk and challenge that is more cash burn. Needs a behavior change in the customer because it was not built from a user experience perspective primarily. Also, this means you have to groom your customers to start liking it the way you build it. This process takes time and money, basically. You have to invest more on being in the market while burning cash until you gain momentum. 
And the third one, there is more risk. Even through the rewards are much higher in the approach, on the flip side, the risk of failure is also quite high. You won't follow the herd, or, but rather expect the herd to follow you right from the beginning. This could pose a great challenge in customer acquisition phase. So Excellent. when... <laughs> yes, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, finish it. Uh, when it involves creating or enhancing a product that requires continuous development and improvements, need to adjust to involving customer needs, preferences, demand close collaboration between various departments, and prioritizes providing ongoing value and customer satisfaction over achieving one-time milestones or deliverables. Product-centric approach, then it's your choice. Exactly. Yeah, so this is uh, very well thought through and uh, I, it, I can see your experience coming out of these pros and cons. Uh, uh, and as you said, rightly, every approach we take has its own pros and cons. Thank you very much, uh, Yulia, for that. But with these uh, benefits and challenges that we know, uh, when do you think uh, product-centric approach will be a, a really effective approach? Okay, so the product-centric approach basically foster new ideas. And let me provide a couple of those to you. Technology and experience. Companies employing uh, a product-centric approach often have specialized teams and experts working in cutting-edge technologies and developments. This team continuously explore new possibilities and come up with innovative solutions. The second, that is market analysis. A product-centric approach involves studying market trends, identifying gaps or emerging needs, and creating products that cater to those demands. Extensive market analysis helps companies to understand whether their innovation efforts should be concentrated. The next, that is competitive advantages. Innovation through the product-centric approach can lead to a competitive advantage. By offering unique and superior products, companies can differentiate themselves from competitors and capture market share. And the last but not the least one, that is pushing boundaries. This approach encourages companies to push their boundaries of what is currently possible. By thinking outside the box, they can introduce groundbreaking ideas and disrupt existing markets. That's why product-centric approach is important for the business. Okay, that's excellent. Thank you very much for that, Yulia. And um, from importance for business perspective is clear, but uh, how do you identify whether a team needs to adopt a product-centric approach or not, or are they are really on par in this area? Can you help us with that as well? Yes, that is a very good question. Thank you for that. So uh, basically, have you asked yourself, or maybe you heard from other your team members those questions? We are spending a lot of time, money, and resources in these meetings. I don't like this project is going anywhere. I can't even remember why we are doing this. Yes, sounds familiar. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, let me tell you a couple of stories. Let's imagine insurance domain. Product owner finds time to explain to the team the entire flow of how policies is issued from start to end with all the key steps. After seeing it, the team immediately suggests automating one part of the flow. Right now it's done manually and it's time consuming. Product owner didn't consider automation because he thought it would be very difficult to implement. While team recognize that from technical perspective, it will be easy to automate. Result, saved many, many hours of manual labor that over time translates into substantial cost reduction. Another story that is connected with lawyers portal. The team that has been developing the product for a few years, and at some point, instead of putting one more story into backlog, Product owner asked the team to help reducing bonds rate. 
and they suggested the revamp menu make it more modern and easier to understand. Again, technologies allow to do that easier. As a result, product owner received positive feedback from users and bound rate was reduced. So engineers could help with improving the product at many levels. Their input is important as they have strictly different perspective and understand technologies well. But to have the most impact, they should see what they create as a product for customers, not a mere technical solution. So there are four fundamental areas that should be focused on when evaluating how to bring a product-centric operating model to your team. These are people and culture, governments, measures, and process. So help your team to know your customer, to feel their pain and needs, to see how they struggle with a product and how they are happy when product helps them to achieve their goals. Explicitly share results of qualitative and quantitative researches. Let engineers read and hear feedback on real users or even to talk to the users in case that is definitely possible. That would be super cool and helps to create connection with customers and feel the impact of the product. Tell stories how product helped customers. Also explain what the business is after, what the business and related product goals are, what the process toward these goals is, and regularly provide updates. If you want engineers to actively participate in improving the product, they should have a say in what and how will be done. It doesn't mean the engineers should dictate how the product should evolve. It will likely end not so well, but their opinion and ideas should be taken seriously. I'm the product owner and you should do how I say. Please leave your ideas and concerns behind the door. No. That is not exactly the approach to encourage active participation. The next, that is educating engineers about the industry. It shouldn't be a university level, but explaining some core concept would be useful and highlighting key trends in the market. Also, please tell your team about the competitors, what their strong sides, where your product is better, and what they are the key competitive areas. In all required, it all requires time, definitely. Allocate time for engineers to run customers, business, industry, competitors, to actually think on what could be improved. And one more thing, show the impact of the team created. Show how few uh, new features affected the product and customers. Show changes in metrics, share the feedback about the, this specific feature. People love to make the impact. So to sum up um, the ideas, there is no ideal approach, but each approach has its own pros and cons. But current product-centric approach is a global trend. Uh, when implementing it, please be patient and do not expect changes to happen overnight. And Naresh, you're driving the product excellence initiative. So Absolutely. could you please tell us more about this initiative and all about it. Yeah, sure, I would love to do that. So I want to talk about product excellence initiative that we are having in India uh, for, for EPAM in India. And uh, I want to start talking about it from the mission and the vision that we have here. So um, we the main vision we have uh, here uh, are for epam in india to become the best product development services organization uh, where we are developing great um, uh, product uh, development capabilities in our engineers uh, because today we are looked at like more an engineering company than a product development company um, so we want to develop that product development capabilities in our engineers along with the engineering excellence um, capabilities that we have been already developing for several years now so uh, we want to be actively contributing with ideas and solutions uh, that best suit 
uh, our customers uh, in their products and in the markets where their products are operating right so uh, that is a very important goal we have uh, while we are currently uh, somewhat uh, passively in implementing the solutions uh, and not proactively uh, solving them but uh, we want to actively contribute with ideas and solutions also going forward so and uh, we want to move away from the short term customer managed delivery models we have in some of our projects and we want to move into a more long term outcome based high value stream delivery partnership with our customers where our customers think about having us in their uh, you know um, enterprise systems plan for not just this year but for several years ahead so um, that is product excellence initiative we have started in india to cover uh, these vision that we have okay great so how do you plan to achieve this vision what is your process so um on the next slide, our process is basically it starts with inculcating the curiosity in the minds of our engineers, right? So today, uh, our engineers, we uh, as engineers, we are more focused towards, uh, you know, finding a technical solution to uh, the challenges or the requirements, right? So we are paying less attention to the actual business problem or the actual need of an end customer. So. Uh, making our engineers develop that curiosity first is the first stage so it's and then we want to make them be passionate about providing the industry best solutions and and the most suitable solutions for the specific end customer and the end user challenges and from being curious to passionate and then being obsessed where the team is um, you know team is providing um, consulting services uh, to the customer and not just asking them, uh, you know, what are the requirements that needs to be fulfilled. So on the next slide, I want to uh, detail more about these uh, maturity levels that we want our engineers to take through. So, um, so at a curiosity level where we want our team to know more about the product ecosystem that uh, uh, they are working on and where they ask questions like what how and who and have a great focus on the customer and the product and the market in which the customer's product operates so developing a lot of knowledge and information uh, with a lot of curiosity on those dimensions and from there they start to ask why and why not questions based on the knowledge that they have gathered in the curiosity level they channel all that knowledge and they start engaging in building the product to cater to the market right and there they are solutioning to the challenges and the business problems they are adding a lot of value to uh, the uh, product that they are developing and they are very distinguishing in how they are building their product against other competitors in the market and from being passionate they have to go into a next level which is being obsessed where they are, they are their customers preferred team right so there is no more asking questions here it is more about being a counselor and being a consultant and advisor to the team so it's not asking questions anymore it is just counseling and and it is being consulted and being empowered and like i was saying being inclusive partnership with them for uh, for their enterprise systems plans in the years ahead so that is uh, how we want to achieve this goal okay thank you this maturity levels is very interesting concept basically and how do you know what is the level of support required for engineers at epam sure so um, we we understand that uh, not every not two teams are same right so every team may have uh, a different level of maturity already so some of those teams may already be at a curious level or some teams are already providing industry best solutions on the for the customers on their business problems so 
to identify which team needs what level of support we have come up with uh, the assessment process for product excellence that we have so we are doing assessments uh, for uh, product excellence capabilities of the whole team and it is not just the developers only or product owners only or business analysts only we are uh, verifying and uh, doing an assessment for the whole team on their product excellence capabilities um, and that when i say a team a team that is working on the same product of the same customer so that is the team we are assessing we have a we have a team of three panel members one coordinator and one committee head uh, and we do a 90 minute session to assess the team on product excellence dimensions so and the dimensions that we have seen in the previous slide that is the dimensions i was referring to and we have a point, five point scoring mechanism from novice to intermediate advanced expert and transformative uh, we do assessments um, and then we do we give the scores do a lot of documentation and we have we use epam internal portal prism for that and we provide good feedback and recommendation that helps this team in their journey to meet the next level um, of product excellence. So those are some numbers of how many assessments that we have done so far in India. And it is really going well um, uh, from the product excellence initiative perspective, Yulia. You're doing great with contributing basically to this product centric approach delivery model transformation in EPUM. Thank you for that one. But could you also tell how is delivery management receiving that? What has been their take on this initiative? Yes, so there has been a mixed set of reactions coming from the delivery management. So some of these testimonials I want to share. Uh, on this screen here. So uh, I've been hearing from uh, the whole team because um, it is very important end of the day how they receive it. So uh, some of the testimonials coming here from the project managers and also the delivery managers and even the development teams. So as you see there, uh, they're talking about, um, you know, how they were spectacle a little um, uh, skeptical a little in the beginning and then later uh, they started uh, preparing for it uh, they really learned a lot about the customer and the vision so definitely some change of mindset have started over there i would say and uh, some of the questions so uh, sadik here is saying some of the questions from the panel were thought provoking and made us to think differently about the customer perspective so it is definitely causing some mindset shift, I would say. Uh, Nisha on the right, she's saying helps team own and deliver holistically. Okay, so very interesting point that she has mentioned. And uh, encouraging um, us to deliver even deeper into the working of our client and how we can look for avenues to contribute. So different angles coming from uh, the business analyst on that SNP project. And we have one delivery manager uh, who's talking about, um, you know, how it helped them transform their thought process and mindset uh, through the process have been uh, shifted. So this is shifted to the new level. So this is some of the feedback. I have more such testimonials in the coming slide in the next slide as well. Uh, where um, where they are definitely seeing a positive change in how the team is working. And um, this definitely shows that some mindset is changing. Okay, thank you. And this is about uh, how our customer sees it. So we have uh, got an opportunity to meet with some of our customers. Um, which is Edward Jones. So um, they have said that, uh, you know, they, they have said that being a product company themselves, they have not, they do not have any such approach or they do not have any such, um, you know, um, practice inside their company. And um, they are fine to extend our their support uh, to EPAM on this. And they're looking forward um, uh, to have participate in the workshops that we have related to product excellence and UKG as a customer is also very happy to see this initiative uh, and they found it very interesting and they are looking forward they were looking forward to see 
the assessment results of their team when we finish it. So uh, that is how we have uh, um, made an impression in the minds of the customer, Yulia. And on the next slide, I want to show some of the core team that is working on in this initiative from India. We have Sandeep Joshi, Vice President, and Basha Ankur, some senior directors who are supporting this, delivery directors uh, and business unit directors from insurance and payments who are participating a lot, and um, a couple of delivery managers, including me. So uh, this is really going well with the support of the core team, I would say, Yulia. Thank you. Thank you, Naresh, very much for walking us through your product excellence initiative. That sounds really interesting and great and great testimonials. So now we would like you as participants to reflect on the topic. So please ask yourself the following questions. Does your project have a product centric, project centric or customer centric or a blended version of those and maybe something else approach? Yes, and it is very important to reflect on yourself after this session. So ask yourself what kind of benefits and challenge of implementing product-centric approach are applicable for your project. Uh, also, it is important to think about product-centric approach will be an effective approach for a project or not, based on what you learned today. And does it really, um, uh, does your team really need to adopt product centric approach? Uh, do it, do give a good thought about it as well. So please uh, take those questions and think about them and product centric approach. So thank you very much. Thank you for your participation. In case you have still questions, you are able to contact us via LinkedIn. Yes, and do enjoy the product-centric approach that you take and do enjoy your journey to being a great product development services company. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, guys, again. I'm back. I hope you can see me. Yes. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for the amazing presentation. Uh, I really like the way you structure it in uh, as an interview or discussion. Uh, you delivered in a very lively and vivid manner, and uh, I believe the audience uh, felt the same way too. So we can start, we have some questions, we can start with the QA section. Uh, I will raise the questions. I will not address them to specific uh, one of you, Yulia or Nares. You can decide, except if it's been addressed to uh, one of you already from the chat and uh, QA section. So. Uh, how can IPAM engineers be successful in this product excellence journey when they are looking with other vendors of their customers? Naris, Yulia? Sure. Can I take that, Yulia? Yes, please. Okay, great. So uh, thanks for that question. A uh, very interesting question and a software services consulting company like IPAM often works with customers where there are people from other vendors sitting around us and working on the same product. So um, so now how, how can we be successful in our product excellence journey when we are in that situation? Uh, and that is the question. So um, I think that gives us a competitive advantage to be in that situation. Uh, no matter how many people in the team are working and how many of them are from EPAM as a vendor to the customer or other vendors of the customer, um, when we can gather and gain the knowledge about the customer and th their basic business problems and challenges, and when we are working on providing the industry best solutions for their business and end user challenges, customer is watching so remember that and customer has his eyes wide open and they can see that difference that is coming uh, from uh, employee coming from epam versus employee coming from any other vendor like accenture or or um, you know tcs right so mm -hmm. When customers see that difference in engineers coming from EPAM, that they have that knowledge and they have that 
uh, kind of capability potential to provide industry best solutions obviously the customer will think uh, before uh, not signing their next contract with us so uh, so like i said when we are in a situation with multiple vendors we are actually having that competitive advantage i could uh, thank you, Naresh. And I could add over here, basically, by having this approach and by delivering the value, we're also somehow coaching our customer because customer and stakeholders, they're taking part in overall delivery. And when it comes to other vendors, we are leading by example how we could do our best as a delivery team to basically bring the value to the customer. I totally agree with you. I was thinking the same thing with Naris, that we have the advantage and uh, glad that I belong to this company. So another question, again, the same applies. You can decide who's going to go for it. How will this approach work in a staff augmentation engagements? Right. So um, on a staff augmentation engagement where the customer is having the complete delivery ownership um, we are just uh, working on specific tasks given to us. Um, it, I think engineers in EPAM should not uh, worry about what is the level of uh, you know, exposure they are getting and what is the level of participation they have in the project. It does not stop them from learning more about their customer. And one day will customer will notice that they that our engineers are you know, showing interest and, you know, having the potential to learn about their business. So, and, and um, you know, if it is just one or two people working uh, for our customers uh, from EPAM, they will definitely see that EPAM has that potential and they will uh, definitely mm -hmm. sign more contracts with EPAM for mm -hmm. much larger engagements. That more business exactly. for us. Yeah, that was exactly what I would like to highlight, basically, that we are as a company, we are focusing on long term engagement with our customers. And that could start with something rather small, but providing services on the very high level. Uh, we have experienced people that could let, lead us, basically, to more contracts and long term connections with customers. That's Absolutely, true. I agree. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth advertisement and uh, reputation is very important. So another one. Are you recommending the product-centric approach to all teams and projects? Maybe I could take, take that one, Naresh, if you don't mind. Sure, so, yeah, go ahead. I could say here that when it comes to product-centric approach, definitely it has pros and cons. So we couldn't say that we are recommending that everywhere for everything and that will solve all your problems. Definitely you should be mindful. Think about challenges that this could bring. Still think about your customers and select approach for your particular product or project very mindfully. Naris, do you agree? Yeah, yeah uh, definitely I agree. So like Yulia said, there are definitely pros and cons, but we should we should focus on you know making the best out of the advantages that we have and we should have our risk mitigation plan for whatever cons we see. And most importantly, uh, we should enjoy our journey uh, from our current state to getting into a more product-centric approach state. Yes. Uh, you said that uh, we should uh, reflect on our uh, teams and projects if it's uh, product say if they're having a product-centric approach. This reflection, that's my question. This reflection should be like in the beginning, ongoing. Do you how do you how often do you take a step back and you reconsider that? Okay. So how often, I mean, um, since it is a continuous process, I will suggest that, you know, we have um, retrospects. Um, we have to retrospect on how we are doing pretty much after, uh, you know, every PI, right? So maybe we can hook it up or connect it to the agile delivery model that we have and 
you know um, understand and assess ourselves how we are doing from this new approach that we are adopting and um, and then there, there need not be a separate cadence or separate process for this it can be connected to our agile delivery model yulia you have anything you want to share on this basically very similar answer i believe that we should keep that in mind that we are focused on product centric approach and use any moment to reflect that could be also retrospectives based on sprints anything else any other ceremonies basically where you are visiting your processes what went well what you could do better and to think about that from the focus of product centric approach okay thank you uh, one more, what is the most challenging part of the implementing the product centric approach on the project? That is a good question. I believe the most challenging part as IPA mainly is a service company that is proving that and showing that to our customers because they're our main like clients and sometimes they are not ready from the very beginning to accept any other approach except that they used to had in the past so that for me is the most like challenging part you need to explain not only to your team why it is important to talk about all those things that we discussed today but also to do the same job or even more for your customer Naresh, what do you think yeah, I agree. So um, I think uh, we can convince our engineers and we can make them adopt the product centric approach or product excellence mindset. Uh, but since we have to have even our customers uh, work hand in glove on this new approach, um, putting them on the same page sometimes gets really difficult. But when they see that there is a greater value on a long run in this initiative and in this approach, I'm sure most customers definitely will accept this and love to participate. I see. Thank you so much. Uh, one more. Can you share some tips or techniques to utilize product centric approach to break a long term product vision into small demonstrable demonstrable projects that can deliver iterative values to customers and also not hide the revenue stream. That's a long one. Maybe I should post it also to our chat. Yeah, Yulia, you want to take that? Uh, yes, basically, that is a good Good question about this long-term product vision. And I believe besides that, that is uh, breaking down into small projects and some parts of it. Uh, we still should think about the product, its vision, its goal and their needs. Uh, on the first glance. And then whenever you are delivering small parts, you are not misled, you are not uh, just uh, forgetting about that one and your team is proper focused. Also, that could help basically to split that into those small parts, because then you understand better which kind of value you're delivering each time with each like sprint, PI, whatever, and you're focusing on that one. Do you want to add something? No, I think I'm good. So now putting, making them into smaller demonstrable uh, parts, is uh, a crucial step but at the same time not losing out on the uh, you know larger plan we had is uh, very important as well so yes i'm aligned with you yulia but do you have any tips or techniques of how to do that tips or techniques of how to do it so uh, now um, when when you have a large goal in mind how you best uh, break it down into um, you know smaller achievable and demonstrable um, uh, pieces. Um, there is there is a there is a technique of vertical and uh, horizontal slicing that we can do, um, and um, there is also a technique of um, you know uh, dividing it by business units and uh, different segments of uh, end users and business users that we are catering to. So we can take um, any, any of the technique based on uh, the priority that is defined by the customer. And to add to that one, I could say also technique of five whys. 
will be really yeah. good over here mm -hmm. basically to always ask yourself why we are taking that one why we are dividing into that one how that will influence our product and its main goal i agree Hey. Yes. And remember the why uh, and why not questions that I had in one of our slides. That is um, that is where we are. Um, you know, we can. That is the approach we can take here. Yeah. So there is a point about product centric approach that it takes time to bear results. How can we onboard the change the change sponsors on this? So like I believe question. every change, every change, it takes time. Nothing happening just in one moment over the night, just because we decided to do like that. We already saw a lot of digital transformations of our customers, like in progress or on the very starting points. It always required effort, passion, and time. Definitely time, basically to adopt, to people to use to that one, to improve their skills, to go through those challenges, to be able to learn more how to mitigate some of the risks and to understand better what, how, how and what you could get from this approach. The thing is that it's going to take time for the results. So how you can actually uh, keep the interest of the sponsors live how you can like you it's there is a time gap that uh, how you manage this time mm -hmm. gap to get the change so as usual as you manage any expectations of your customers from the very beginning you should say that that will not be immediate thing you should tell them how what you will do and when they could expect some results and basically set up the system of metrics so you will be able to measure them and later you will see this data and based on data already make conclusions so Naresh, maybe yes yeah and there is maybe anything from your side as well yeah so um now keeping the cu customer engaged throughout the process and like yulia said spinning up some measurable kpis uh, to show the consistent progress and how we are getting to our ultimate goal i think um, uh, that will help us during the journey and uh, a motivated members in the team who are you know continuously uh, striving for excellence is something also helps instead of monotonously doing the same tedious job um, you know having motivated people self-motivated people and passionate people in the team who will continuously evolve the process instead of you know just blindly following what was initially stated so uh, those things is what will take us uh, you know to success during the journey maria so basically be transparent and showing mm -hmm. some progress in uh, small steps on the way just to show that there is a, we are doing something like we don't uh we don't, no, it's not just promise there are changes but it's gonna take a while because it's a big change it's a big difference absolutely yeah Yes, yeah, we are, sure. sorry. And additionally, I could say that as a company who has already experience of those changes and transformations, we also not break in any agreements, but to share with our customer like past experiences and success stories. Okay, thank you. Uh, now one from the, our YouTube channel. How difficult is to move towards product-centric approach from IT services consulting based organization as it requires cultural shift in the organization too. I will post it to our chat. How difficult is to move towards product centric approach from IT services or consulting based on a uh, based organization as it requires cultural shift in the organization too. Cultural yes. shift. That is the tricky part. Right. Yes. So uh, the cultural shift that we are looking at here, um, which is why we did not um, you know, plan an overnight change of the culture change or overnight change of the mindset, right? So um, one of the slides where I was talking about a three-step process to get to uh, what uh, we are aiming at, right? So first we have to adopt that curiosity mindset to learn more about the customer and their product. And then we have to be 
able to start providing uh, specific uh, solutions that are best suitable to the customer and their challenges and then uh, go, and then talk about um, you know then talk about being the customer's preferred teams and being consultant uh, and advisor to the customer so uh, the culture shift i am sure is not happening overnight or over a fortnight but it is happening in phases which is why we have that framework of three step process to change our culture from our current state uh, in the it services company to a more consulting based and uh, uh, you know and uh, advisory based uh, services uh, that we want to provide and as a company that building long term um relationship not only with customers and clients but also with our employees we're not suddenly trying them to shift just when they're on the projects we have continuously education for them and providing those like trainings workshops even outside of the projects where they're taking part that really help us the team to be prepared already at the moment when they're assigned so even in case we have to still coach our customer we have another vendors on the project our team is prepared we are not just starting from the very beginning and trying to implement that so the key is planning and try to make the process as smooth as possible and have the people on the loop uh, always updated Exactly. And the culture not happening quickly, as Naresh told, not happening overnight. So we need to work on that regularly inside the company. And for sure, it takes time. This is fundamental for every company, for every business. Okay, one more from also from our YouTube channel. How to define the unique value in the product when we have competitors serving the same need? Okay, I can start with that. So, um, we so whether it is customer or any common man, when they see a product, they see the nuances to it, um, and and uh, the nuances in the industry in the current trend, as you may have known, um, is about um, you know the artificial intelligence and and uh, you know Chat GPT world. This is so uh, now. Uh, so, so how do we define is what best artificial intelligence solutions you are providing or industry trend solutions you are providing uh, in your product defines the uniqueness, uh, defines the unique value against your competitors. So, um, so that is one approach we should take and that is something that we should keep in mind while uh, working on our new product development plan. Yulia, you have anything to add? No, I believe you totally covered this question. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, one, probably last one, uh, because we don't we run out of time. Uh, how can business analysts and product owners help their teams more to adapt product-centric approach apart from uh, regular elaboration use cases descriptions support in creating test cases and etc that they do usually i believe over here we are talking not only about vas like business analysts product owners but also about product managers and the best thing that works for the team that is to have comparison comparison uh if we are doing that in another way and if we are doing that with product centric approach those results as i was showing in like my part of the presentation those celebrations of achievement how it influence not we did that in the right way and thank you but like resulting feedbacks influence to show all of that, that will bring some insights how even do better in their job and how do better in the product-centric approach, ownership overall. Naresh, maybe anything else from your yes. side? Uh, also, I want to add a uh, good point from your side, Yulia, and I also want to add uh, that uh, whether it is a product owner, business analyst, or product manager in the team, um, they should always focus on um, you know 
upskilling the team's knowledge in the in what they are doing right so th other than the product owner product manager maybe most of the team is not aware of what they are doing and why they are doing uh, who what is the end goal of what development they are doing maybe they are not aware so uh, how BAPO or product manager can help here is to make sure they always are on the lookout to upskill their team's knowledge in the product they are working for or the customer they are working for. Always make sure that you are setting the context and uh, for any kind of discussion, whether it may be related to a specific requirement or a bug or a defect. So set the context make sure your team understands the context understands exactly why they are doing what whatever they are doing so that that is one very good uh, contribution uh, people from business analyst or product owner can can do that is very good point and i would add here even like uh, to challenge like technical solutions that they are proposing towards the product goal so they are proposing that because it's like fancy new technology or we're really focusing on like product goals and what we need to deliver. Thank you, guys. We got the point. So uh, that is was all. Thank you, Yulia Timoshenko and Naris Sutrave. I really hope I didn't butcher your names. I'm trying my best for the enlightening presentation in product excellence mindset and for investing your valuable time your contribution is highly valued. And a special thanks to the audience for their active participation in the discussion. Let's now take a brief break for a couple of minutes before our next speaker, who aim to explore the potential of product add-ons for scalable platforms in the era of generative AI. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, that was yeah. a pleasure. Appreciate you. You. Thank we you, Nara. appreciate you. Guys, don't go. Let's stop a cup of coffee or tea and back. Sure. Thank you.